Welcome to New Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church Sunday service. Under the dynamic leadership of Reverend Dr. Lorenzo Neal, we are located at 2202 Decatur Street in the city of Seoul, Jackson, Mississippi. Join us online at Facebook, YouTube, or our website, newbetheljacksonms.org. We are a church where God is our Father, Christ is our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit is our Comforter, and humanity is our family. Here are this week's announcements and weekly ministry opportunities. If the stress from the pandemic has been affecting you, let our pastoral counseling ministry help you. Licensed and trained professional counselors are available by appointment. Join us Tuesdays at noon for Bible study with Dr. Neal, streamed live on our church Facebook page. Gain insight into the scripture that will bless you throughout the week. Sunday school each Sunday at 9 a.m. by way of teleconference. Call 701-802-5157 enter code 412-1360. Our mission is to minister to the social, spiritual, economical, and physical development of all people. Our vision is to be a church where every person feels loved, welcome, and accepted, where God's word is explained and experienced on every level for every person, when every person strives to be relational, encouraging, authentic, and loving. Welcome to Sunday service. Thank you for joining us. Let's join the service in progress now. to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within our gates, O Jerusalem. For a day and night court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God 
as the well in the tents of wickedness. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Those who be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwell. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing his praise. And we shall do so by lifting up him number 21. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved be the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life in atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes, that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but pure and high and great will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Let's lift our voices in this great hymn. To God be the glory. by the hurricanes from last month uh, and also for New Bethel for our, our blessed members many who are not sick but still wish to hear their names called we ask you to pray for Brother Robert Littleton Sr. for Sister Edmund Washington for the Brookings family for uh, the Mosey family for many others who may be Sister Rosie Bright, we solicit your prayers for the Bright family. 
for all who stand in the need of prayer for all of our elected officials we solicit your prayers on behalf of the city of Jackson our governor for our mayor and for our president let's go to the Lord in prayer Father God we want to say thank you today Realize this is the day that you have made and we are choosing to rejoice and be glad in it. We ask, O oh God, that first you will forgive us of our sins, blot out our iniquities. We thank you today, God, that your mercies are new every morning, your compassions are new every morning, your faithfulness is new every morning. Great is your faithfulness to us. Look and have mercy this morning, oh God. We ask that you would not only have mercy on the names that we call, but the many who are watching and desiring a, a move in your life, in their lives, so you have mercy this morning. Yes, yes. Lord, as we go forth during this week, Father, so many are preparing to lay loved ones to rest. Look and have mercy. Have mercy. Look and have mercy on those persons, Father God, who are struggling with illnesses in their bodies, not even, uh, uh, not just cancer, but all forms of sickness. Have mercy, oh God. Have mercy. Look into the hospital rooms this morning. Look into the long-term care facilities this morning. Look into our schools this morning, Father God. Yeah. Look and have mercy yeah. on every church door that's open yeah. in your name this morning. Have mercy. Have, have mercy. mercy. Have mercy. Look and have mercy right here in New Delphi, God. We need you. We can't make it without you. Lord God, we just thank you. We realize as we go through this week that you have called us blessed. Go with us and stand by us. Yes, God. Keep us every day. Is our prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ. We pray. Amen. 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 We welcome you to join us in this call response to the Lord's prayer. And the response is simply saying, Hallelujah. I lift up my eyes to the hill, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, 
the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over you, your going out and your coming in from this time forth and evermore. The word of God for the people of God. From all that dwells. all these words saying I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage you shall have no other gods before me Lord have mercy upon us and divine should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Should love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, we be to Father.
God be the glory, great things he has done. We thank and praise God for all of you this morning. Thank and praise God for our singers and of course our musicians. I told y'all, y'all, y'all just don't know how they be before we do all of this stuff. They, they, they groove. Have your Bibles turn with us to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1. And we're going to begin reading at verse 44 and read down to verse 51. Again, before I start, I want to thank all of you who gave donations toward relief. That uh, God has allowed us to be able to give out those supplies that you donated so generously and we are so thankful and grateful for you and the resources that you helped us provide to those impacted uh, by the hurricanes in South Louisiana, South Mississippi. Thank you so much. The Gospel of St. John chapter 1 verse 44 through 51 find these words. Now Philip was from Bethsaida of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathaniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. If you allow me just for a few moments, I'd like to ask you a question. What makes you a believer? What makes you a believer? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we are in this sacred space, at this sacred moment, we're grateful. Grateful for you allowing us to see another day's journey. We are grateful that you have allowed us to have the abundance of your love and your mercy upon our lives. And we are grateful just knowing that you are our Father, our God, our provider, of everything. And I am grateful to be able to stand once again to proclaim what you have placed in my heart to share with your people. Now I ask of God that you allow the words of my mouth. And the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in your sight, for you are indeed my rock and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen and Amen. So we are in an interesting day and age today where it seems people are successful, susceptible and gullible to so many things. Uh, to be more bluntly, there's so much opposing dynamics in our world today, particularly regarding this great, this great sickness that has inflicted our world. And as vaccinations are available, there are camps who 
would rather not be vaccinated. Some who are stating that all should be mandated to be vaccinated. And there are believers on both sides. And those believers espouse their beliefs, whether it's based on facts or feelings. And unfortunately, some, some of these persons have louder platforms than others to convey their beliefs and in turn convert others to their belief. Believing is nothing new. Matter of fact, all of us believe something whether we care to admit it or not. Belief in a broader sense is something that we deem to be metaphysical. And yet we experience belief every moment of our life. When I was growing up, I watched the TV show, The Monkees. And I know y'all know that TV show and know the musical group. Yes, sir. They, they had a song that said, I'm a believer. And the chorus from that song says, then I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. Not a trace of doubt in my mind. And, 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 and um, we could go on and on about how belief, and now they were talking about love, you know, and how they didn't believe in love until they came across this individual that brought out that belief in love. But I, I, I remember growing up in Louisiana when we had a football team that was officially called the Saints, but were better known as the Aints. Don't y'all say nothing. <laughs> y'all better not say nothing. Because I ain't going to talk about Cowboys. <laughs> talk, talk. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the 49ers. Women. <laughs> Who else can I go after? Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me get back in holy mode. <laughs> but 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 we we had confidence that one day our Saints would be one of the great football teams in the country. Uh, we 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 would see video and see games where some people would have bags on their faces because they were shamed of their team. They were shamed of the fact that their team was losing. And then something phenomenal happened post-Katrina. All of a sudden, the team became revived. Got a new coach got a new quarterback, and went all the way to the NFC Championship. And it sparked a new sense of belief in our team. It spurred something to the point where we no longer believed ourselves to be apes, but to be real saints. And then our belief came to fruition when on a cold February morning in a Super Bowl game, we found ourselves, who were known as the comeback kids, come back and leave with a championship ring. And I'm talking about like I was on the team. I'm, I'm talking like I was I'm part of it. And, and so many, so many of us who were fans or are fans, that, that's how we saw ourselves. We, we saw ourselves like we were on the football field that we won the game. We were going down, when we went down to the championship parade, everybody was so excited because what we had believed had finally come to fruition. Everybody got to see what we really believed, but nobody else did believe. Now, some of y'all can apply that to other areas in your life. I just decided I would use the saints as an example, because I can. <laughs> the, very, the phrase, we believe, can, has been used and is being used for any campaign that you can think of, largely because 
of the breadth of what belief covers. Belief can mean and cover just about anything. There are some people who believe themselves to be unicorns. There are some people who believe themselves to be extraterrestrials. There are some people who believe uh, Elvis is still alive. Amen, lights. Belief in and of itself is not wrong. Belief has inspired so many people to do so many things, good and bad. But we're not talking about that kind of belief today. What we're talking about is a belief that's based on faith. Now, be more specific. Faith in God's promise of salvation through the Messiah. In our text, we find Jesus of Nazareth traveling with his companions to their hometown. He's recruiting, he's recruiting people to tell them to help share his ministry, his message. John the Baptist has baptized him and the heavens have opened and all of this stuff has happened. And he's going now sharing the gospel message. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's found Peter, or Simon and his brother. And he's found Philip. And Philip is so excited about having connected with this individual that he has to share it with his family. And he comes across his brother Nathaniel. And here we come in this text. Philip says, we have found the one Moses wrote about. We have found the one the prophets have been talking about. We have found this Messiah that we have been expecting. Now, here's the, here's the thing. There were plenty of individuals trying to fill the role of Messiah at that time. There were plenty of men masquerading as the Messiah at that time. But some way, somehow, these men were convinced that Jesus of Nazareth was the one that, the, that Moses had written about, that the prophets had prophesied about. They were convinced, and they had to share it. And I like Nathaniel's response to his brother. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And I know some of y'all... Especially if you live in any hood. When, when, when you hear success breakouts from the hood, yes. Can anything good come from Georgetown? Can anything good come from Subdivision 2? Can anything good come from anywhere in Mississippi? Can anything good? And yet, and yet Nathaniel has this encounter with Jesus of Nazareth. I don't want to focus on what, what Nathaniel said because that's been preached time and time again. We, we know, we know, and we've heard sermons where, where somebody asked the question, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I'm, I'm not focusing on that. I want to focus on the conversation between Jesus and Nathaniel. Nathaniel approaches Jesus. Jesus sees Nathaniel approaching. Jesus says, look, that's a man who is an upright person and in him is not found any deceit. That's the first word that Jesus says to a person he has never seen who has already disqualified him because of where he came from. Instead, of approaching him and saying, greetings, what's up, brother, here? Yeah, I'm this, this, that. He said, I see you for who you really are. You are a man who is upright and without deceit. First thing I want all of us to know as, as I do a little bit of ice in Jesus as, as I read into this text and read us into this text, I, I want you to know Jesus truly knows your heart and intentions. We try to be slick 
nowadays when we try to figure out people's agenda. When, when we are uncertain about coming in contact with new individuals, we, we try to read them out the best way we can. We, we try to fill them out. We, we want to make sure that they're not shady. Amen, lights. And here Jesus throws all of that away because the moment he encounters Nathaniel, instead of trying to try and trying to impress Nathaniel, he recognizes who Nathaniel truly is. Listen, when, because he was looking for men of integrity, Jesus observed diligently and wonderfully a man of integrity who didn't even know he was a man of integrity. Jesus looks at Nathaniel and says, look, you are an upright man. You are one of the best Israelites in the hood. You are one of the best upstanding men in the hood. You will not be trying to deceive anybody. You're going to call it like you see it. You're the right person for the right reason in the right region to do the right ministry. And I see you for who you are. While we can facade, place facades on ourselves in social media. We can be anything we want to be. We can say pretty much whatever we want to say. Jesus really, really encounters us in a different manner. He doesn't try to look at us and look at our credentials. He doesn't look at us and look at all the things that we've done to try to, you know, get all the accolades. He, he looks beyond the accolades and he sees the thoughts and intentions of our heart. He's the word of God. That is able to discern us. And though Nathaniel's response to Jesus was not positive, Jesus' response to, Je to Nathaniel was one that was transforming enough for Nathaniel. Nathaniel is thrown off. Nathaniel has already decided in his mind that there's really nothing good that comes out of this small village. There, there's nothing really notable. There's nothing really recognizable. And you want me to meet this individual. And when he does meet Jesus from Nazareth, Jesus calls him out on who he really is. Isn't it good to know that when you really encounter the Lord, when you really engage him, he calls you out on yourself? And Nathaniel is a bit perplexed and big puzzled. And Nathaniel asks this question, how do you know me? You would think because of the relationship between Philip and Nathaniel as brothers that Jesus probably would have inquired of, of, of Philip about his family. Perhaps on a, on a travel to Bethsaida where they were and where the others had lived. Perhaps they had conversations about his family. And perhaps Jesus probably inquired, well, well Phil, tell me a little bit about your family. What, what's your family like? How many brothers do you have? How many sisters do you have? What is your occupation? What, what really? Maybe he gathered some information while they were making their, their, their visit to this place. And, and maybe Nathaniel was thinking, well, how do you know me? How? Do you know me? Not what did my brother say about me? How do you know me? How are you perceiving me? Is what he's really saying. How are you figuring me out just from observation? How are you doing this? And Jesus, I like Jesus. I love how he does it. Jesus, you say, hold, hold, slow your roll, slow your roll, slow your roll. I saw you before your brother even called you to come see me. I saw you under the fig tree perceiving me, seeing how we were interacting. I saw you looking at us and you're familiar with all of them. You know about them, their homeboys. You, you know what they're like, but now you see them interacting with me. While you're seeing them interacting with me, I'm looking at you beholding me. I'm looking at you observing me because you know these men. You know they don't just get around and get down with anybody. You know them and for them to be around me, there's no good thing from Nazareth. I was able to perceive you. I was able to read you. I was able to discern you before your brother even told you about me. Before your brother even called you to meet me, I had already observed you that you were trying to figure out 
Is I the real thing or not? Is I is or is I ain't? Who will they say I am? And I like the response Nathaniel gives to him. The response is, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. The response that Nathaniel gives is one not of adornment or adoration. It was born more out of a fearful response. You know me. You see me. You got to be who you say they are. I, 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 I think many of us are like Nathaniel when we encounter the presence of God. When, when we truly have an experience with God, we, we are basically overwhelmed by the reality that God will work with us. God will talk with us. God will minister with us and to us. And we, we, we're a bit overwhelmed and, and then we got to get all religious. We got to get back spiritual. We got to get all deep. We got to get real and say, you, you, you're a God. You, you're the one who saved me, delivered me and, and, and all of that. And God said, hold you, slow, slow your roll, slow your roll. Which brings us to the question that not only I am asking, but the question that Nathaniel asked. Jesus asked Nathaniel. Jesus asked Nathaniel, do you believe because of what I told you? Is that all it takes to convince you of who I am? You didn't believe when Nathaniel what that you you didn't believe when your brother came to you and told you we found who Moses wrote about you you didn't really fully believe when you saw us coming into town and you recognized everybody but me you didn't fully believe when when I came to you until I told you what I said you didn't really believe but because I said all of that now you believe Jesus. Point number two, Jesus knows our belief is sometimes conditional. Our belief is sometimes conditional. You ain't got to say amen, but if you like me, you prayed for a whole lot over the years. You've hoped for a whole lot over the, over the years. Only to see disappointment sometimes because the prayers that you may have prayed were not answered in the way you thought they should have been answered or may not have been answered at all. You, 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 you experienced small things. And, and, and because of small things, you had small faith. You had small, small, small expectations of what God could do. Jesus looked at the thing and said, your, your, your faith is based on what you heard me do. And you ain't even seen that yet. Mm -hmm. I like that. Uh, you, you, your faith is based on what you heard me tell you about yourself, but you haven't really seen anything yet because what you're going to see is going to be greater than what I even told you about yourself. Don't let your faith be conditional. Don't let what you believe be conditional on what you have experienced or what you have heard or what you have seen through someone else's experience. No, don't let that be the one thing that shapes your faith, because what you have seen, what you have heard, is not even the beginning of what God can do. That's why I like what Paul writes in one of his letters, where he says, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the mind of those who believe what God can and will do. For many of us, our faith, our faith is so shallow that we need more, more evidence before we have a true belief in what God can do or what God has done or what God will do for us. You know, the question that Jesus poses to Nathaniel was one that would press Nathaniel towards self-examination. See, if he first believed nothing good could come out of Nazareth, 
How could he now believe that a simple observation from the same man from no good Nazareth could change his mind and his heart? So Jesus posed the question not to get a response, but to get an engagement from Nathaniel himself. It was posed for Nathaniel to have self-reflection. Because if it was just simple observation that got him to believe and confess, why ain't there many more people like Nathaniel? We have all seen miracles after miracles. We've heard sermons after sermons. If you've been in church long enough, you, you've seen enough to convince you that God must be real. If you live long enough and you've never been to church or you know somebody that ain't never been to church, I guarantee you they still know there's a God somewhere. And because they know there's a God somewhere, they know eventually they're going to have an encounter or an experience that's going to be beyond what they could explain. It's going to be so metaphysical, so divine, that the only thing they can say is that God did it. And then it may lead to self-reflection, self-examination that will press them toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Now, that ain't always the case, but... You know, that's what we hope as we preach. That's what we hope. And then Jesus said to him, look, Jesus said, you will see greater things. And I like what he says in those last verse, 51. You'll see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus knows that our vision is limited. Jesus knows our, our vision is limited. Even as a preacher, I have limited vision on what the scope of God can do. I, I, I have limited vision on the miracles God can do. I have limited vision on the greatness, on the glory of God. Some of you might be saying, well, preacher, you shouldn't be preaching then if you have limited vision. And I say, you're probably right. <laughs> Maybe I don't need to be preaching. Maybe I need to be just sitting in the presence of God, allowing him to minister to me so that I can grow as I need to grow and be as I need to be to see what God wants me to see. The angelic vision that Jesus speaks of was both divine, but also in essence was presence. It speaks of how Jesus wants us as believers and wants Nathan or Nathaniel as a disciple to be in the presence of God at all times. Because when you're in the presence of God at all times, you see the greatness, the glory, the vastness of God. You're able to behold the beauty of God, inquiring in his temple and being able to rest in the Lord. Not, not in death, but in life, in victory, and knowing that nothing is impossible with him. So as a close, I'm posing the question once again, what makes you? A believer. Are you like Nathaniel? Does it only take a little bit? A little convincing? Are you gullible? Can I stand back here behind this podium and say anything I want to say and you believe it? Or are you one that Jesus is pressing the question? Is it because of what you have seen, heard that you're a believer? And yet you don't really see the vastness of what I am able to do? Ask yourself that question. Then open yourself up to be ready to receive. This is one for us to ponder in reality. We're really, really seriously. Because it's this world, particularly as the United States, is. We're becoming less religious and we're finding other things to replace 
our system of belief. The question that those of us who are still standing in the faith has to be asked. What makes us a believer? Not a church goer. Not a church member. Not part of, you know, not church attached or anything like that. Church adjacent. We come on Mother's Day, Christmas, and Easter. What really makes us believer? And we can't have the answer to that question. We can't answer the question. Then we need to have the encounter with Jesus so he can open the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of our calling, what is the inheritance we have with all believers. Because he wants us to truly believe. Let's pray. Father, many of us are like Nathaniel. Many of us have been introduced to religion. We've been introduced to a practice of a belief system that has kind of made us feel good about ourselves, but really never introduced us to you. We really never had a true encounter with you where you saw us as we saw you. We're asking the question that you asked us, that you asked Nathaniel. And may we find the answer not just in the reading of the Bible, not just in the, the practices of our faith rituals, but may we find it in a real relationship with you through your son, Jesus the Christ. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I extend the invitation, as I extend the invitation to Christian discipleship, there may be somebody who does not know Jesus at the bottom of your sins. The gospel message is simply this. God became like us. He was despised and rejected of men. A man acquainted with sorrows and of grief. He was crucified on a rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. Buried in a borrowed tomb. Stayed in that tomb, but God raised him from the dead. And through him reconciled us to himself. That's the gospel message. And the only thing you need to do, if you're questioning what you believe, if you're questioning anything, is to know that God is real and he did this act for Jesus Christ. To know Christ, to accept Christ, is to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. That's the first invitation. If you don't know Jesus, part of your sin, this is your first invitation to know him. Secondly, if you're looking for a church home, we want to invite you to join Luke Babel and grow with us. Join us as we grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus the Christ and God the Father. Those are two invitations before us. And if you've accepted either one of us, even one of those invitations, if you've accepted Christ as Savior and Lord, Leave a comment, accept your salvation. And we welcome you into the family of God. If you have decided to join New Bethel as your home, virtually or in person, leave a comment, join. And we welcome you to the family of New Bethel, where we are striving to be relational, encouraging, authentic, and loving. That's the invitation, amen. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Give God a hand of praise, amen. Hallelujah. As we shift now from our moment of preaching and worship into our moment of giving, we thank God so much. As I said earlier, we're thankful for those of you who thought in our robbery to share of your resources and your donations. We were able to make those uh, donations and make the delivery down to Grant Chapel Amy Church in Amit City, Louisiana. And we thank you 
so much for that. Not only us, but the Southeast District, the North District, all the South Mississippi Annual Conference. We made donations uh, to uh, South Louisiana, those who were directly impacted. We just thank you so much for that. We also know um, uh, we are coming into our annual conference. As a matter of fact, next week our annual conference is beginning. Not this week. It was, oh my goodness, this week. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we're going into annual conference, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, let us prepare to give. As you know, your giving supports New Bethel and helps us do all the work that we do here in our local community, in the city, and the state, and across the world. We are thankful to you. We were just able to support our church in Pakistan. We were able to give an offer donation there, and they have now Bibles in their own language. That's because of your giving. We're able to do things like that. Uh, and because they have Bibles in their own language, uh, four persons converted <laughs> and were baptized at New Bethel Church in Pakistan. That's because of your giving. We thank you so much for that. As you know, there are two ways to give. You can give uh, to the physical address that should be there on your screen. If you'd like to bring the offering down this afternoon, uh, we'll be here waiting to receive the offering. Uh, you can also give away by Givelify virtually. It should be there on your screen also. And um, how we choose to give, we're praying the Lord's choice is blessing upon you. Let's go to the Lord's and bless this offer. Father God, we want to thank you right now for every good and every perfect gift comes from you as we give. We give not grudgingly or necessity. We are cheerfully blessed us, oh God, that we, our, our fruit may be seen as we sow into this local ministry. And we thank you for what you're allowing us to do. Bless, oh God, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Take this moment to give however you're choosing to give. We bless God for you. Real quickly, um, as you know, we do have our weekly activities. We do have Bible study on Tuesdays uh, at noon, and we do have Sunday school on Sundays at 9 a.m. Um, now, let me say something real quick. Um, next week, next Sunday particularly, we will be in annual conference. Um, and, uh, we are soliciting your prayers this week uh, for our bishop. Bishop Jeff Stafford J. M. Wicker. This is his first annual conference in the 8th Fiscal District. We are the first conference of the, uh, the series, and we're looking forward to him. So we solicit your prayers on behalf of Bishop Wicker and Supervisor Wicker that they will have a successful first annual conference. Uh, so next Sunday, we will uh, I'll do a pre-recorded video because Sunday we will be in Bibles, I mean Sunday school and have our opening worship, I mean closing worship, sorry. Uh, if you would like to join in the South Mississippi Annual Conference, you can go to the 8th Episcopal District website, uh, as well as the 8th Episcopal District uh, Facebook page, and you'll be able to see and join in all of the worship activities uh, that will be happening this week, beginning on tomorrow evening. Uh, I think that's pretty much all that I have to say. Uh, we do pray for all of those who will be traveling on next Sunday, coming here for the closing and commissioning service. So pray for all those clergy who will be traveling here to Jackson area. This is Communion Sunday, and uh, we do not have the elements as we would usually have before us, but we're going to take this time to consecrate your elements, whatever elements you have before you at this time. You can take it any time, but this is what we're going to do. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He broke it and he gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this as often as you do in memory of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had blessed it and given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink, this is the blood of the New Testament, shed for you for the remission of the sins of the whole world. Drink it as often you do in memory of me. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever element you may have in your hand, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, take and eat. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, take and drink. 
love to his spirit. You have done faithfully. You may rise from wherever you are. The Lord be with you. Take this opportunity to fellowship with your brother, beloved, your sister, beloved, wherever. Sense of love, show some love. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. As we close out this wonderful Sunday service this morning. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Present you fallings before his glory where it's seeking joy and gladness. To the own wise God, our Father, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and always. And the people of God said, Amen and Amen again. God bless you. God keep you. Until next time.